Welcome to the channel, Tribe. This episode is a part of our webinar series, TribeCast. In this episode, we have Shivani Gaba talking on the power of mocking APIs. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so uh, thanks for having me today here. And I would be talking about the power of mocking APIs. About myself, uh, yeah, Gosler was very, uh, thank I'm thankful to him to give a very nice introduction already about myself. Uh, uh, just a little bit of brief recap. Uh, I'm uh, Shivani Gaba. I am originally from India and currently based in Hamburg in Germany. And I work as a senior QA in uh, a company called New Work. Yeah, uh, and uh, I'm in this domain, testing domain since almost eight years now. And I've got to get to test a lot of um, very exciting projects actually. And I've really enjoyed my journey until now. Uh, I have been very happy these days, uh, very happy in the times uh, doing this testing, but also there were times when I was really like this, like frustrated. And you know why? What, why I'm like this? What I'm doing? I am trying to test a very complicated system, which is involved with a lot of microservices and everything. And I cannot reproduce a bug that we were getting from production because it was due to some other dependencies we have. And I had not one, but a lot of similar cases like this in my life. And that's why I thought it would be very interesting to share my story with you, where I can tell you my story, my experiences, I can explain my application to you, and then we can see what difficulties I faced and how I solved them and we can learn from it. But I thought it would be even more interesting if I would share, if we would have a common application together, which we explore and not me telling you about the applications that I have tested, we would have a little small application, which we would look around, which we would see how to test it, what difficulties we would face there, and how do we solve those difficulties. So uh, to have a, a brief look at the what, um, what application do we want, I know it, it's Corona time, it's very sad these days, we cannot go out anywhere, uh, but let's have a throwback to our good times. Uh, please remember about your vocation, last vocation that you had. What was it? Where was it? Think about it and maybe uh, one or two of you could uh, interact with me and tell me where did you go? Uh, can you please unmute uh, for the speakers to interact? Mahesh? Yeah, just a second. I think we'll have to use the chat box. Uh, so I'll request everyone if you can answer in the chat yeah, box. Maybe but you can. Uh, I think once the webinar is started, the settings uh, are not same. Uh, okay. Maybe yeah. you can raise your hand, whoever wants to talk. Uh, I can allow them to talk as well. Also, okay. we already have interesting replies in the chat box. I see it's interesting to see how people are going to different places and exploring stuff. Uh, so someone has been to, Balaji has been to Kerala, Gobi was in Portugal, Mike was in Denmark, uh, Sakti was in Kerala, and Priyanka was in Northern India. So no matter where you were, uh, one second, why can't I? Yeah, oh. So no matter where you were, maybe in the deserts, in the sun, uh, maybe you were exploring the mountains and seeing the rainbows, or maybe at the beach relaxing, or in the snow skiing somewhere, one thing we might, all, uh, we might all have done, that is doing a weather check, because we don't want to be in beaches having heavy rainfall. And that is what we would explore today, a small application of weather check, and see how this application looks like, what problems are we facing, and how are we solving it. So let's have a quick look to this application. Um, a heads up that this application, uh, it would be open source. The mock, uh, the mock uh, source code that I would show you also would be open source. So all good. Uh, and um, please uh, feel free to refer it later also. 
So a quick look to the application. So basically, this is a small application that I've created. Yeah, so this is a small application that I've created where you can enter any city, like let's say Hamburg, and I would get the weather. Uh, okay, in weather it's currently, uh, Hamburg is 23 degrees with somewhat clouds, and there's some humidity details about some sunshine and sunset, and then a little bit about the coordinates. What is actually happening in background of this application is that this basically UI is fetching the details from an open source weather API, which is open weather map. So this is the app, uh, API that I'm using. It allows you to create your own key and then you can hit up to, I think, 100 uh, requests per day for free. And this is what I'm using. So if you go back to the application, I would open the inspect tab. And we can see in the network what I really said. So let me, let's say we can see for Delhi. So you can see here and request was made. If I click on it here, it's the open weather API request that was made. So the data was returned from this API. Some data was returned and that is what our application is showing us here. And this is application we want to explore. So let's try to test some cases. Let's say I want to test for an uh, invalid case of saying entering a wrong uh, city. Okay, so it says that it, sorry, we cannot find the entered city, which is correct. Let's say what happens if I enter a number, something like this. So it seems like it's taking the postal code of that city and then displaying it, which seems to be correct. Now let's say I want to test for uh, seeing how it looks like when it's sunny out here instead of cloudy. So is my background looking okay? Is my, uh, is my uh, data coming correct or not? But how do I do that? So either I can search in the whole database or something or I can look for different and do a hidden trial method and see uh, on which country or which state is a sunny day or I don't know, maybe you can find a good solution. And think about severe cases like a thunderstorm. Would we really want to wait for a thunderstorm and then test how our application is giving warnings and something like that? And there are a lot more cases which we would not be able to test just by simply playing around with just this part or with the actual thing. And to explain that and to explore the, those cases, let's. Let's go back to our presentation and see what is the problem and how we tackle it. So currently what we saw was we were having a client and we were having a weather application in this client, which was a web app. It was making an API request to the open weather server, which is a third party to us right now. And in the response, we were getting an API, which were API response, uh, which we were displaying on our client. And now the problem to test some very complicated and difficult scenarios is this. We don't have any control over the APIs. So what we want is the control over the APIs so we can set whatever we want and we can test our system. To see how that would look like, we want to break this connection between the original server and our client and have a mock server which would give us a stubbed response. I would use this word stub a couple of times. So stubbing means that we are setting what response we want to have. And then we can actually get whatever response we want to have from the server. So coming back to the questions that, uh, question that I had, uh, how would I test about the uh, case where this, um, where we, we want to test about sun or about some different weather condition. We want to, uh, so we would use this uh, server and uh, we would create this server using Wiremock. And uh, why did I use Wiremock is because it's easy to set up and configure. It offers a lot of features which we'll explore. It can be either uh, a standalone server which you can start or it can be also embedded in your current application. And a very good uh, positive about uh, Wiremock is that it gives you a very nice community support. So you have questions you can ask. There are a lot of people who answer, so you're not stuck anywhere. 
Um, but as a common disclaimer, I am more a fan of approach rather than a tool itself. So I really love Wiremock. It has helped me solve a lot of problems in the past, uh, but there are other tools uh, in the market also. And I think it depends upon what your situation is, what your projects are. So you can also use some other tools. So in this whole uh, presentation, I would go over Wiremock and I would try to explain uh, how to set up it, how to set it up and how do we uh, get benefit out of it. So let's see, how do we really remove the dependencies that we had earlier to test different cases and how would uh, Wiremock help us test the system in isolation? So getting back to my application here, uh, my cursor. So this was the application that I had, right? Uh, right now we have only actual server. So we are making requests and the uh, server is responding us. So what we can do, this is the code source of my uh, application, weather app, okay? What we can do, we can create a, basically a switch that where do I want all my APL calls to go? So I have made a switch here. Uh, let me just zoom in, zoom in also for you. So uh, I have made a switch here that uh, my calls can go to, my calls can go to the actual server or they can go to the mock server. So that's what I want to uh, achieve uh, to test the real cases, uh, to test the cases where we have problems, I would go to the mock server and to test the end-to-end -end scenario, we can uh, integrate it to the actual server. And for, uh, for um, simplicity, I have made this UI uh, dropdown here where the actual work would be due. So I can create, I can um, call the actual server or I can call the mock server. So I would just um, put this down and now we, uh, we can just uh, do it with the help of API itself, uh, with the help of UI itself. And now let's see how we are um, setting up Biomock. So I have done uh, nothing in this pro nothing complicated in this project, but this is just a Biomock project. I have added a, a jar file, a Biomock standalone jar, which you can easily get online. I've added it here. And I would just start, actually I've already started it, but just uh, we need to start the Wiremock with this command, Java minus jar, and then the Wiremock jar name. That is what we need to start. So the Wiremock would start, and then we can check, by default it starts on port localhost 8080. So we can check on localhost 8080. Let me just close this tab and this tab. Uh, localhost 8080. So it's uh, one second. Uh, so this here you can see all the uh, wait, sorry, maybe I'm entering a wrong URL. Sorry, I don't maybe remember the URL. Uh, for where we can send or uh, check all the mappings. Uh, my bad, I should have copied it somewhere. So basically I have started my Wiremock server. Yeah, I've started my Wiremock server and here in the Wiremock server, I can uh, basically put any response that I want to have. For instance, I would like to, uh, I would like to just put the response that I had earlier for my uh, actual application. So how do I stub it? I say that stub for this particular URL. And in my case, I want to stub for the Hamburg weather. And then in the constant URL, I just have an API key, right? So I would say that, okay, please stub for this URL, a response which would give me a status 200 and it would be giving me this JSON file as my body and all the files that I uh, want to uh, the file that I want to have here is kept in a files folder you can see here I have already prepared the current weather JSON this is nothing but exact copy of what the response I was getting from the server itself from the real server so it is exact copy uh, of that so let's try to see um, let's try to run Mm 
sorry. Yeah, so let's try to run this case. So it says the test has passed. And now if I go to the same URL, you can see that there's a mapping. And this mapping is exactly the copy of this particular file. So you can see, uh, you can see that the law coordinates are matching, the weather is what I said here. So basically now I've said the response from Wiremock and I can see it here that yes, the Wiremock response has been set. And I can now also test my application if it's working fine. So instead of going to the actual server, I would go to the Wiremock server and let me clear the console. And if I check for the Hamburg weather now, you can see here, it's going to localhost now instead of my, uh, instead of the uh, other API, uh, actual server that we were using. So if I click on it here, it is going to the localhost and it is returning us the exactly same mapping that we have. So now basically what we achieved here is an independence. So we got rid of the dependency that our system was having. And now we have full control over how we want our application to behave like. And now um, what we can do is the thing which I was telling you about the sunny weather response, how would we test that? That's the thing now we can actually do very easily. So I have the same function uh, where I would just up for the same URL, uh, a response, response of 200 itself, but now not with the original file, but with the sunny weather file. So let's see what sunny weather JSON file has for us. This is right now exact copy of what I had earlier, but I can change it to say sunny weather. And let's say it says it's sunny, really bright, right? So what I would do, I would run this case, sorry. I would run this case. It's running fine, it's ran, uh, it ran fine. And here I can check that now my API is returning, my uh, local host is returning sunny weather instead of uh, cloudy. And now if I go and check, let's just clear this. If I go and check, oh, okay, maybe I said, uh, so it's sunny weather, but maybe the icon I said wrong, one second. That's weird. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I'm really sorry. I maybe forgot the code of this uh, icon. So basically, but we can already see that instead of cloudy, we are seeing a sunny weather here, which we set in the mocks we are seeing here sunny weather as our weather. And in the description also, we are seeing sunny weather and we can make any change in the mock what we want to have. Uh, we can make uh, it as a sunshine as a different time. We can increase the humidity. Uh, so we can basically, we have the full control over our API and we can see what we want to do. So uh, now let's explore some more scenarios which would help us in this way. Uh, Scenario number one, some difficult to reproduce scenarios, um, uh, which we just explored, like um, having the sunny weather, having a different, uh, um, different uh, climate, having some more humidity and so on. So similar tests we can do for more complicated scenario. We can test some edge cases and we can set any response body that we want to have. Scenario two would be invalid response. From now on, I have already prepared the videos of what the, uh, how it can help us, what would be the, uh, how we set the different responses and how our application can test, can uh, perform using that. So for invalid responses, like there are bugs, right? But these are not the bugs from our system. These are the bugs from the APIs that we depend upon. 
And with mocking, we can catch those bugs and see how our systems are responding to that. So here in this, uh, it's the same application, same thing. So currently I am having a function where I would send an invalid body and a status code of 200 itself. So let's see what the JSON file looks like. This was the exact JSON file that we had earlier. And now I would introduce some bugs into this JSON file. Like I would make this uh, field as a string, like change the data types instead of uh, integers. So I would make these as um, uh, strings. And I would remove uh, some mandatory fields from this. So sunset and sunrise, I would just remove them. And now I would run this, I would stub this as my response. So I'm stubbing uh, the invalid response here and I would run the test. So the test ran fine. I would check that the changes are reflected. So yes, it's ABCD and EFGH. And I have also uh, the mandatory field missing. And now we can check what happens on our basically system. So you can see that uh, we have found some bug like the temperature saying NAN and the sunshine and sun valid are like uh, invalid IST. So there are some bugs reflected on our UI also, which should not happen, but we should handle them in a different way. And it's not a very good user experience. So these kind of invalid cases where uh, we would have uh, like invalid um, scenarios, that's how we can do this. Uh, some similar ideas to test would be, uh, we can play around with the body file by making the body as the corrupt one, like maybe not even a JSON file or some commas missing and how see how our system reacts. We can remove some mandatory fields uh, like we did right now. We can uh, also play around with the headers uh, by removing some headers and see how our application is responding. And also we can uh, do some invalid headers, see how our application is responding to that. Scenario number three, API responsiveness. So basically sometimes the APIs are very slow and our systems are, uh, you know, we, we have to take response from them, but it's 2020 and no one is going to wait for like 10 seconds to see, uh, for one minute to see a weather response. So we have to give them at least a good feedback that yes, we are fetching the details. And that is what we can really achieve from mocking. So uh, I cannot really uh, put a delay in the open weather API, but I can do this in the stubbing. So here is the exact same file. Again, uh, I have the 2200 status with the correct JSON. So now I'm going to add a delay to it so I'm adding a fixed delay of 8,000 milliseconds. And I would run the test. And as the test has passed, I would just see in the response. So you can see the loader on the top that it's loading. So it's like, it, there's a delay in the mock I've fixed. And when I go to the mock server, I enter the city. I am getting a delay. So it's saying, please wait for the loading. And uh, you can see in the console that there's a pending request. And now the status has loaded. So yes, there was a delay in the service, which we didn't have control over, but at least we got a feedback on the UI, which was a great thing for the user experience that it's not, uh, uh, it's, it's giving a feedback to them that yes, we, we, we are looking for the response. So these kind of cases is very, very helpful. And this could be done by stubbing. Scenario four, errors in fault. So my image is also missing. There's an error in this slide. Yeah, so basically there can be errors and uh, sometimes the services are not available. There's an ISC, but how do we reproduce that in our systems? It's really complicated, right? And that is one more benefit where Wiremock can really help us. So we can stop for any, any code that we want to. So let's try to see again a video for that. So we have the status code 200. I would change the code to 500 and I would just remove the body response. It's not needed. 
And now I'm checking that if the external services uh, giving me ISC, how my server would respond, how my state would respond. So I have run this test and if I check on the server side, it says that yes, it's the, my mock is, my local host mock is working. It's a 500. And if I check on my application, I would just open the console. So boom, my application has crashed. This should actually not happen. It's like, an airplane going down and then it's, oops, sorry, did I press something wrong? Yeah, so it's more like app, oh, one second. So it's, it was more like app uh, going down application that has crashed. And a similar thing we can do for faults. So I can just remove the, air, uh, the status code and I can add a fault to it, like that the, um, there's a error uh, in the connection reset, right? That there's a connection reset error. I would run the test. And I would check that there's a mock has been successfully, there's a successful stuff that there's an, an error connection reset. And I can check on the site that yes, it is working. So you can see that the request has failed but our system is loading and loading and loading. There's an infinite loading loop, which is not a good user experience. And these kind of bad things, these kind of bugs we can catch with the help of mocking. Uh, similar things that we can do is we can do for any status code. We can try for any servers uh, errors, uh, mock for uh, create stubs for ISCs, for service unavailable, we can also create stubs for some bad requests. We can create the stubs for uh, also non-error codes like in 300s or something like that. We can also check for different faults like I showed you for the connection reset and there are other faults like random data. And there are so many other things that in faults which Viamox allows us to configure. Um, scenario five is when our APIs are not ready. So let's say that this application that we had, uh, we are integrating, uh, um, we are allowing our users to create account and then they can log in. And when I log in, I see my profile picture and a name and some features over there. But now the problem is that this, this team, they are not ready with the API. So this API, the profile team, they're not ready. Now, how do I test on my system if the data they are sending is looking correct, if the long name are not, uh, you know, having a dot dot, or all the pictures of different sizes are going correct or not. And this is where, again, Viamock would help us. We can stub for any, any kind of functions, any kind of things, and then uh, we can check how our system is behaving, even if the API we depend upon are not ready. Yeah, so these were all the different scenarios we wanted, I wanted to explore with you. And I, I would, as I said, make this whole public and you can also explore it yourself and see how uh, you can find different bugs with it and how you are curing it. So um, looking at all this, does it come in your mind that if it's only helping to test us the web apps, this mocks thing? And my answer would be no, 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 no. So what we have earlier was we had a micro a UI, which was talking to a microservice, which was external to us. So to test the UI, we were mocking the microservice and we were stubbing any response that we wanted to have and checking it for our system. But in general cases, in many complex cases, the systems look like this. There are a lot of microservices involved there are different uh, parties communicating with each other. And let's say you want to test the microservice, which I'm making in green. So then we would basically mock all the other services, which are, uh, which this service would depend upon in the exact same way we would stub the things and we would check how our microservice under the test would work like. So to summarize, 
no matter what your system on the test is, if it's a, a web system, if it's a, a mobile application, or even if it's another microservice, if it depends upon any microservices or even some external microservices, all we have to do to test these systems independently is to create mocks of these and get rid of the dependencies that we have. And that is how we would really test our systems in isolation. So concluding the pros, uh, we saw that we can test the system in isolation. We reduce the dependencies. We don't depend upon different uh, things which don't belong to us. Uh, we can do this parallel development, like what I showed you uh, for the profile thing. Uh, that even if your APIs are not ready, you can still develop them and test your UI part. Uh, these mocks are really reliable. They don't have any delays or until you set them, they would never fail. So you really get what you want and not as a real system where any delay, any errors could happen. Uh, they are very fast, like we just uh, communicate. I, I check the stub and it's very quick. Uh, this helps us testing very complicated and edge case scenario. They help us testing the mock data and they help us preventing the rate limit. So we are not hitting the real server a lot of times. And that is how we would uh, not, you know, bummer it. So we are, uh, mock, uh, we are going to the mock server. So we don't have uh, any um, lot of calls going to the real server. And for the cons, I would say, Everything comes with a whole overhead. So this is also a maintenance cost, like uh, you would have to update your uh, stubs all the time. If your API contracts are updating, uh, you would have to maintain them. And um, yep. And also um, the complexity would increase if there's increase in the number of microservices that are there, and then it won't be maybe the best solution to have. And some more cons, Really, I don't know. I, I could just really find these two cons and that's it. So I see the pros are overweighing a lot of the cons. If you come to know more cons, do let me know. Yeah, uh, before I wind up, there's one more interesting aspect of um, Viamog that I liked a lot, uh, which I would like to explore with you. So this is a typical uh, testing pyramid that we have with unit integration and end-to-end -end test. And what we saw right now was uh, stubbing here. So we were stubbing in the integration test. We were creating some server. We were having a server. We were creating some integration test. And then uh, we were doing in this level. But we can also do mocking at unit level. So here also we can take the benefit out of wire mock. Um, basically how? A very, very quick look. Uh, we have a client which talks to the wire mock. Uh, this is the system. Uh, this is how we did it in the integration test. For unit test, we would have the client and we would uh, have an embedded wire mock in the client itself. And that is how we would write a unit test. So the test would remain the same. The service that you want to depend upon, you would stop that service. You would create exactly similar function. And then you would have a rule of the wire mock and you can just start the wire mock and this function then you can oh sorry and this function the this stub function this you can use in any of your unit tests and see how your api or how your services are behaving for that um, yeah uh, so with that i would conclude this talk uh, i would summarize what we learned so we learned about how and when to set, uh, why to set the bio, uh, mock servers, uh, like to test and how to test in isolation, just the entity that you want to test and how to get rid of the dependencies by, the, uh, by creating mocks. We uh, looked at how to stub different responses and see our, how our application is behaving. Uh, we saw how uh, mocking would help us not only in integration, or end-to-end, uh, -end, but also it can help in the unit level testing. And we also forget not to check any, uh, not to check the weather uh, whenever you go for any vacations or something. 
So I hope that the next time you're going on an invocation or you're seeing a weather application, you would remember me and you would see how, and you would think in the background how all this mocking is working. So I hope this, um, this uh, presentation has helped you and uh, you would be able to mock yourself and you can apply these, uh, this concept in your system and get rid of the dependencies that you have. Um, there are a couple of references that I've added. Uh, there are very good um, articles from Martin Follower, from Bas Pujitras and from Kapil. I referred for creating this application and this presentation. Yeah, and um, with this, I would thank you all and time for questions.